here tonight, and it gives us a chance to bring on Kayla McClintock. So come on in, grab the headset, here we go. <laughs> a rousing round of applause. <laughs> Kayla, it's great to, great to see you, and thanks for spending some time with us. Hi, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm how are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Good, good. Hey, uh, first of all, this is a kind of a fun week for you guys because, you know, it, you, you kind of train all year long and you've got the OAC championship finally here this week. Yep, and we are so excited. <laughs> I, I would imagine that considering what you guys have been through the last two years, to have a conference championship meet that feels a little bit more normal is probably a pretty welcome sight. Definitely. Last year was... We were thankful we got through the season we went through last year um, with COVID and everything. Uh, we did do OACs at a different pool. Um, this year we're back at Akron, and it's our my third year at Akron, and it's a great pool and um, beautiful atmosphere and the fans and everything. It's going to be awesome. I'm so excited to see everyone do so well, their hard work pay off and everything. It's going to be awesome. I don't want to make any assumptions. I know this is your, is your senior year. Yeah. Is this your last go round? Um, I think, so, I think so. I think so. I think I've peaked. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I love swimming. I'm definitely going to miss it. Um, it's. I've been swimming for 15 years, so it's it's just been an awesome ride. I don't know. What do you hope to accomplish this week, or do you not try to think, you know, too big picture about the fact that it could be the last meet for you? Uh, personally. Yeah. Um, I think. <sighs> We have big goals set for our 800 free relay on Wednesday. Um, we kind of all need know what we need to go for that. And Wednesday, I have the 400 IM, or Thursday, I have the 400 IM. Um, this is my second year swimming that. So it's kind of different for me. I train distance. So um, 400 IM is different for me, and I'm excited about it. Um, hopefully, I can earn some points for them. And uh, Friday is the mile, or the 500, and then Saturday is the mile, so. <laughs> got a long meet. I know, <laughs> it's a long one. <laughs> well, and so give folks an idea who maybe aren't intricate, intricately familiar with a conference championship like this, how difficult it can be to swim potentially three or four days in a row and to be doing, in, in your case, both distance and sprinting events. I, I know this year you, you've set uh, a career best time in the 50. I'm not sure exactly what you're gonna swim this weekend, but just the challenge of kind of going back and forth in events like that. Um, it is guaranteed that we all swim at least three days. So it's definitely, some of us, twice a day. Um, it's definitely taxing on the body, but we're, we've been training for it all year. We are 100% prepared for it. And that's why I'm so excited because we're all gonna show out and it's going to be amazing, and everyone's going to go best times, and I can't wait to see everyone achieve their goals and set new ones for next year. Um, with regards to sprinting, I, <laughs> I train distance, so literally any time I sprint, I get a best time because it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, <laughs> But, um, yeah, I'm definitely focusing more on distance this year, and um, the 400 AM is kind of just a throw out and see how I do. Sure, <laughs> so sure. How, uh, how do you break down in your head what events you you know, you know try to peak for? Obviously, you want to swim your best every time you go out, but everybody has one or two events where they're like, that one means the most to me. You know, If I could finish with my best time in that event, and if I have to sacrifice a little something in a different event, how, how do you go about that process? Um, I think I've always had the mindset where I have to do well in the mile. Obviously, I want to do well in all of my events, but the mile is just special to me, and... Um, I don't know. It's it's something that you feel proud of when you finish. It's something. Um, it's challenging. It's uh, I don't know. It's just the, my my favorite event personally, and I get excited about it every year. And I'm hoping to go a lifetime best. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but do you, do you remember the first time you ever swam that right? Yeah, I do. I was I was young, <laughs> and it was it was it made me so nervous before, but. Um, like I said, you feel so accomplished after you finish. So, I mean, it's something that I love feeling, and yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, the team perspective, right? I know you guys have been working hard as a group, and you get training trips to Florida most years. I know that obviously worked out this year. Last year, not so much. Um, you know, but you, you think about the team bonding and, and how the season moves along to, to kind of like climax mm -hmm. at the conference meet. Yeah. What part of all of this week do you look forward to most when you think about your teammates? You know, 
last year we didn't get to go to Florida, which was because of COVID. This year we went, it was amazing. We had such a fun time, but Florida is also very, very challenging. And the whole season overall is very hard. However, like we all bond throughout that entire process and we work hard and um, definitely put in the time. And I know it pays off for everyone at Oasis and that's the best part to see how happy people are whenever they're finished. It's, it, it's amazing. Cause you know how hard they worked. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, give us a little bit about your, your background and your story that brought you to BW. From Pennsylvania, decided to come to school in Northeast Ohio. What was the journey like as you tried to figure out where the right place was for you and, and why did BW fit that mold? You know, to be honest with you, in high school when I graduated, I wasn't sure if I wanted to swim or not. I um, loved swimming. I just didn't know how I could juggle college life with swimming, but I thought I could do it. So I kind of um, searched around at some schools and I found BW. BW was actually the first school that I visited and um, I knew right when I came on campus that this was the place I wanted to be. The people are so kind here. Um, family atmosphere, it's small, it's perfect. The campus is beautiful. And when I um, had moments with the team when I came to visit, uh, they were so personable and it was like a family and I loved it. I loved every second of it. Give us an idea of how your family has been part of your journey and how going to school, not terribly far away from home, uh, has hopefully given them a chance to support you in the pool. Yeah, my family has always been there for me and I love them so much. Uh, two and a half hours is, um, it's a good ways away. I mean, not terribly far, but it's a good distance from home and I appreciate them coming to support me whenever I swim or coming to visit me in general. Um, I know how difficult that could be sometimes and um, I know my boyfriend comes all the time too and I appreciate that uh, I don't know I it just it means so much to me that's pretty cool I'm glad uh, glad they've all been a part of your journey yeah academically as you start to think about you know maybe winding down your undergraduate time here uh, what are some of the things that, that come to mind when you smile about BW um, what comes to mind when I smile about BW uh, definitely just the memories I've made here. I've made so many memories with people and um, it's easy to meet people here and make friends. Everyone's so personable and um, I think about all the great times that I've had my, my, with my teammates and um, I can't even count the amount of times that I've just smiled just thinking about a memory here. I, I don't know. That's awesome. Um, before we start talking about uh, Dave Tressel, why don't we ask you about uh, Coach Demoline and just the impact that she's had on your time here and, and how, you know, both inside the pool and out, how she's kind of helped you grow and achieve what you're looking to. Uh, Coach has definitely become, I can speak for everyone when I say this, that she has been not only a coach, she has been a mentor. She has been um, almost like a mother-like figure to us. And um, we appreciate her. We appreciate her so much. She does so much for us. She is so supportive and she pushes us more than we like to sometimes. <laughs> but it's um, the job, right? <laughs> yeah, it gets the job done. Um, we love her. There, there isn't a coach that I wouldn't. I, I just love her. I love her so much. I can't imagine the loss that you guys are feeling with uh, with Dave Tressel having passed this week. Um, it was pretty obvious just in our, our brief conversation before we got on the air that he meant something to you. And I, I hoped you might be able to, to share a little bit of that. Dave was the best. Um, obviously, we were so, so, so sad to hear that he um, was in hospice. And uh, Coach got to visit him on his last day, which was, I know, so special for her because she's known him for a very long time. And um, I had the opportunity to have him as a coach for, I think, one, one and a half years, one year maybe. Um, he was so positive. He was so kind. Um, he always talked about his family. He always talked about how much he cared about this team and BW. And um, I know my coach told us all the other day how much of an impact he had on our team and how much he shaped it over the years. And I remember the days whenever I would be outside um, of my old house with my teammates. And last year, 
and we would be, it would be summertime, and Dave would uh, drive by on his uh, bike, or he would uh, just drive by in his car, and he would just give the biggest smile or the biggest wave, and um, also what's funny is, I think everyone can attest to this, there was never a bad swim for Dave. Dave would always, always, always find something good about a swim. Um, it could be the worst one you've ever done, and he would just, that was great. Like, that was so amazing. Like, hey, you did good. And it was just, like, the big thumbs up like this. It was the best. He's he's amazing. And it's so sad. Um, but we'll forever, ever remember him. Like, he was amazing. So how, how do you uh – and, and maybe it's a hard question to answer because it's so fresh. But when someone impacts you like that, you know, and, and in a meaningful period of your life, how do you keep that memory alive in your heart as you move on? Well, first off, I definitely want to say that OACs will be very important to us just because Amen. obviously we want to do it for him. He was, again, he's so important to us. Um, I think what he did in the beginning – and throughout his years of coaching for us, it gradually, like, significantly improved our team. Our team is not the same as it was years before, and it is because of Coach Laura and Coach Dave. And um, with the, like, classes going and going, it's important for us to remember that and to carry that on and keep that going because our program is something really special. I, uh, I guess we'll just kind of close with this because you're on the, the sunset end of your career. Whether or not you come back next year, uh, you made a comment. You've been swimming for 15 years, so whether you have one or two more meets or plus a year, you're kind of getting toward the end of this, and, and your time at BW is certainly winding down. Um, when you consider where you were coming in as a freshman, what bothered you, what concerned you, what maybe upset or frustrated you and where you are now where maybe you look back at some of those things more fondly if if there is someone who uh, is in high school a junior or a senior in high school watching this and wondering what it's like to speak with an upperclassman about how your experience can work out well when you reflect on on the frustrating times you had and how it's worked out in your favor um, does does that is there a way to maybe alleviate some of those concerns if you would have known then what you know now? Yeah, I definitely would tell them to take that leap of faith. And, you know, if they're thinking about doing a sport or if they're thinking about doing a fraternity or sorority or anything extracurricular, um, I'd say do it. Take the leap of faith and do it. it. You won't regret it. You meet so many new people and you learn more about yourself. Um, you become a leader. You become... Um, a teammate, uh, a friend, and you learn time management, and um, you, you just become more disciplined. You learn more about yourself, and it's an, it's an incredible experience. I wish I, someone would have told me that whenever I was thinking through things like that. Um, and enjoy the ride. It's it's some have fun, and um, don't take life too seriously when you're. Um, in tough times I don't know it, it, it's uh, that's all the things that I wish I would have known because I did all of those I learned all those <laughs> through those times you know what the I hard mean way, sure. yeah. well and I don't think anybody that was your age coming into college expected to have to deal with something like COVID taking competition yeah. and training away from you um, and I assume probably made you feel like it's it's not something you could take for granted that either. was tough yeah yeah definitely well, we have had so much fun watching you compete the last few years. Thank you. And uh, awfully proud of what you've done and, and wishing you all the best here this coming week. I appreciate it. Yeah, great yeah, to see you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. Nice to have you. All right, <laughs> Kayla you. McClintock from our <laughs> swimming and diving program, getting ready for OACs down at Ocasek Natatorium at the University of Akron. That's coming up this week. Certainly hope you can join, uh, join the team down there at Akron if you'd like to or follow along on the live stream.